Oh, guys, guys, we got it. We got the Sofren SC28. Now, this is the 21700 version of a light that I have been incredibly happy with and I've had on my person for quite a while. So, Sofren came out with the SC28, and this is the Workos TDO2. Now, they look like they're cut from the same cloth, and for good reason. I mean, they basically manufacture each other's lights, but the Sofren SC28 is an incredible, incredible light that we will get into right now. So before we get into any of the specs, I just want to go ahead and say here is the box. It's going to let you know that it has 2,800 lumens, 1,200 lumens in high, 350 in medium, 100 in low, and a 1 lumen eco mode. Now look at that, 1,000 hours in that 1 lumen eco mode. That's pretty, pretty stinking good. With turbo, you will get up to 223 meters, and you'll be able to get a runtime of three hours. In addition to that, this thing is IPX8 water resistance rated with a fall protection, or rather an impact rating of one meter. In addition to that, you have a 29 millimeter head and a length of 129 millimeters. So, I mean, it's a pretty decent size of light. However, given the size and that 21700, Form factor, this does only come in at 83 grams without that battery in place. So all in, I think that that is really, really good. So in addition to that box, the things that come in it are this little tag to let you know that there is a battery isolator that you need to remove in order to activate your light. It does come with a USB-C cord. Now it is USB-A to USB-C that we can plug into your existing power bricks and get this thing charged up. You also get a couple of replacement O-rings and a generic lanyard, and you have your SC28 manual. Now, this is probably going to be one thing that you're going to want to hang on to, simply because there are three. Not just the regular one, not two, but three different modes. There is a general mode, a tactical mode, and a low power mode. But we will go through all that here in just a second. Now, looking at the SC28, uh, I mean, especially compared to the Workos TDO2, this looks very similar. This looks like something we've already looked at before. But I'll go ahead and bring it up here. And I do want to show you that this does have some slight crenulations on the front or the, the bezel, so to speak. Um, and that is reminiscent of their SC32. It has a very long but plain bezel. And that's housing this really, really cool, uh, almost disco ball looking optic with that center uh, section here and it doesn't say specifically what led is in there but fortunately i didn't have very much glue on mine so i was able to get this broken free and before i show you the led just go ahead and look at that this is really really cool i like the design of this uh, and i think it helps give a nice even beam pattern but we'll set that down and to me this looks like an xhp50 so getting an XHP50, that really cool black MCPCB. Now I can't tell. But yeah, unfortunately I can't tell. There is a little too much, uh, there's a little too much thermal paste there to be able to tell from the side if this is a copper or aluminum MCPCB. But either way, uh, you will see again that lens here. It does have a glass cover on it and that is o-ring sealed we'll put that back on and then we'll move down from that so here you do have now if you don't know what this is um, it kind of blends in pretty well and this is a little battery indicator so when you turn the light on it will shine green and this is going to be green if you're between 50 and 100 percent it's going to be red if you're between 25 and 50 percent and it's going to flash red if that battery is under 25 percent so you are going to need to get it to a charger and if you need to get it to a charger fortunately 180 degrees of that you do have a usb-c port here now they switched back over to this uh, really really deep style and i really like this uh, this usb-c port cover but you have all your markings here we'll step down so for an SC28, now I've noticed this on a few Sofrens and I don't know why they do it. I don't know, but uh, if you're a little uh, OCD, this might drive you crazy like it does me. So they have Sofren here in one size text, but then this SC28 is just a little bit smaller. So it kind of throws you off. But I mean, 
I digress, that's, that's not a huge gripe. But we'll step down, and this has that same very thick machining that the, bot, uh, the battery tube on the TDO2 has. Now again, this looks identical as far as this battery tube, just enlarged to fit a 21700 cell. This does have a one-way pocket clip, but I mean, it's kind of a big light. You're not going to want to throw it on your ball cap anyways. Uh, so I, I think the one-way pocket clip in this instance is fine. Um, and I'm not going to want to go with something more tactically oriented if I am trying to uh, use it as, you know, as a small work light, especially clips to my hat. But we'll move over to the tail cap here. And the tail cap lets you know the battery indicator uh, right here, lets you know which way that battery has to go in. But it does have uh, reverse polarity protection. So if you do happen to throw it in the wrong way, don't worry, you'll be fine. And this does have some machining here, uh, really good grip without having knurling. And that's one thing I'm kind of I'm like, it kind of threw me for a loop is the fact that this doesn't have any uh, standard knurling. And Sofern is very, very used to having that on all their lights. But, you know, it's, it's not really needed. Uh, and then we do have some saddles here that help protect that rear tail cap switch. And uh, in doing so, you know, let's see, uh, you can see if we line up the front and the back saddle, you will see that the switch does sit a little bit recessed, and that does give you the option to tail stand if you so choose. But you don't have to do this because, again, it is more tactically oriented. Now, that being said, let's go ahead and take this tail cap off and you do have your Sofern branded 21700 cell frankly I would take that 50 amp ability um, with a grain of salt I, I don't think that we're going to get 50 amps out of this but it is a nice flat top cell huge contact patch here and uh, you see this sorry about that uh, you, you will see this uh, raw edge here and that's going to make contact so when you do have that battery in place it will make contact with this switch and so it will get all that zeus juice over to that driver and illuminate your board now i told you earlier that this does have uh, three separate modes and i promise you i wasn't lying so i do have it set in general mode right now and what general mode means is it's going to be able to run through moonlight low medium high and turbo and that runs through just by uh by with this forward clicky switch here and all you got to do for that is go ahead and give this forward clicky switch a half press and this if you keep cycling through will go through all of your separate modes so here we have your one lumen moonlight mode 100 lumens for low 350 for medium 1200 for high and 2800 lumens here for turbo. Now, if you do want to switch, oh, there you go. Uh, if you hold that switch down for five seconds, all you have to do is do another half press of that rear tactical switch in order to switch between general, tactical, and your low power mode. So I'm gonna go ahead and let go of the button here for a second, and I'm gonna go ahead and press it. And after five seconds, uh, you'll see that, that LED flash just for uh, an ever so brief moment. And when you do that, you have 0.4 seconds to hit that switch again. So here we go. We got one, two, three, four, five. Okay. When it flashes, you got to let go and then do a half press. So that right there switched it from general to tactical. Now we only have high, turbo, and our strobe mode. We have high, turbo, and then if you do a double press, it will go over to your strobe. And that is all 2800 lumens in a tactical strobe orientation. Now we'll go ahead and do that one more time. We'll press and hold. And after five seconds, there we switch back over to low power mode. So low power mode only has the one lumen, 100 lumen, and 350 lumen modes. So if you ever just want to hand the flashlight off to someone uh, that you don't want to sit there and you know stare into the light because they're that kind of person, you can go ahead and set it to low power mode, and that will just give you the one lumen mo moonlight mode, 100 lumen low mode, and the 350 lumen medium mode. So now those half presses will just cycle between, here you go, here's one lumen, 100 lumen, 
350 lumens. Again, one lumen, 100 lumen, and 350 lumens. So that's a nice way to be able to hand this off to someone without having to worry that you know your child could go blind or something like that. Um, additionally, I will tell you right now that I think as far as what Sofern did with this user interface, um, one thing I'm not a fan of is the fact that every time you switch the light on, you will get that quick briefly, uh, brief flash after that five second threshold, but it gives you a way to where you can switch between multiple modes. You can switch between um, different brightness settings, different, you know, you, you can control everything from just one rear tactical switch. And that is something that I would have loved to see on the TDO2 from Workos. Now that's because sometimes you don't want to have to carry around a full-fledged 21700 cell light. Uh, sometimes these are big. They don't hide as discreet inside the pocket, and you want to switch to something a little bit smaller. Now this one is modified, um, but what I want to do now is, since we've seen the user interface, so we've seen the battery, we've seen the body, we've seen all this, what I want to do is I do still have a stock TDO2, so I want to take both of the stock TDO2 and the SC28 from work from Sofern. I want to take them both outside so we can see how the 2800 lumens of the XHP50 compares to the 2000 lumens that the TDO2 will give you. So guys, let's go ahead and go outside. All right, guys. So we have the brand new Sofern SC28. Now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to keep it in regular mode. Uh, I already went through the user interface and showed you everything about how it can switch between a general mode, a tactical mode, as well as a low power mode. So I'm going to go ahead and just run through the general mode so you guys can see the brightness levels of the low, medium, high, and so forth. So let's just get straight into it. So I hope you guys can see this. This is the lowest setting, and we're going to go ahead and ramp up. Now here we go. We brought it up one, brought it up two. And finally, this is all 2800 lumens from the Sofern SC28. That is an XHP 50.2 with the dome still, so you know it has quite a bit of flood. And to compare, we have the Workos TD02. And we'll go ahead and ramp up. Here we go, this is Turbo on the Workos TD02. So again, I will go ahead and go into Turbo on the SC28. Just so you guys can see what the 2800 lumens looks like. And Turbo on the TD02. So this one definitely has quite a bit more distinct of a hotspot, although it's still really not very, uh, uh, very hotspot-like. But you can tell that that TIR optic is designed to throw quite a bit more than the SC28, even with less output. All right, now that we compared the SC28 and the TD02, let's get back inside. All right, guys, we went outside and we compared the SC28 with the TD02. Now, as far as the beam patterns go, you know, I have to say that a lot of it's going to come down to whether or not you want the smoother hotspot to spill transition of the SC28, or if you want that more direct, more distinct hotspot from that really, really deep uh, TIR optic. So for me, uh, I've always been a fan of flood. So it is only 223 meters of throw. However, it's still pretty decent. And if you need a lot of light output, 223 meters isn't going to get as far, but it's going to spread out more and give you a decent sized wall of light. Um, and for me, that's always a plus. So what I will say now is that uh, for me, I, I think the difference in the XHP50, which is rated at 6,000 and oddly enough, I think might be a little uh, optimistic as far as that temperature. I think it rates a little cooler than that, but uh, unfortunately right now I don't have a way to test it. 
So the SC28 to me is a standout stellar light. Uh, this is from, from one of the, I, I don't want to say cheaper brands, but more value oriented. Uh, I will say that this is probably one of the best iterations I've seen of any tactical light. The fact that you can easily switch between that uh, tactical mode, the general mode, and low power mode. I, for, to me, that's a straight win. Again, I would love to see that on something like the Wargos TDO2. So guys, down in the comments, tell me what you thought, not only of the beam patterns, but also of the uh, temperature quality of the light. Tell me if you think this actually came in at 6,000 Kelvin, or if it was a little warmer, like I thought. Additionally, tell me down in the comments if you want to see the SC28 go up against any other light, because I can do a little short um, on YouTube, and I can compare this to any other light that we have. Additionally, I would love if you guys would click on that link down below and you're able to go pick up the SC28 yourselves from Amazon. Uh, it is an affiliate link, so yes, I will make a very, very small commission. And uh, I'll be honest, from a $30 light, that's usually about 80 cents or like a dollar or something. But anything that we make from our Amazon links uh, will go towards purchasing other lights. So I'm hoping to get an IF30 soon, and that's all going to come down to you guys being able to support this as well. So thank you so much for being here. I'd love if you could like this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe to the channel. And if you do, go ahead and click on that bell notification so you get first dibs on when those videos come out. So thank you guys so much, and we'll see you in the next one.